What's up, cooks? It's Wednesday. How are you doing? Today I got something in front of me that I've had for almost probably 10 years, and I've wanted another one of these. And um, so I'm going to show you what happened um, on eBay recently. Um, yeah. So I also have something that's come up. We did an unboxing and a little uh, sound test of that new KitchenAid, the little blue one back there. And there was something funny on the box that sort of made me go, hmm, right? I had that little head tilting moment. And it uh, made me wanted to do a little bit more investigation. So I'm gonna tell you what that was. We're gonna do an initial test to see what's really going on and um, see if that sparks me to have to do a full on test between several different models. So today we're talking chafing dishes and we're also talking KitchenAid. So I know you're sitting here and you're like, why is Amy geeking over a chafing dish, right? Who geeks over a chafing dish? Who geeks over a stand mixer, right? I do. So well, this is one of my first chafing dishes that I've ever gotten. And I bought this like at least, I don't know how long ago, 10, 15 years ago, um, I bought this chafing dish. And it's a Wolfgang Puck. And one of the things is I love this thing because it's one of the only like rectangular shape chafing dishes that I've ever seen. Most of them are round and um, I just, I don't know why, I just love the look of this thing. Um, it does have the Wolfgang Puck uh, signature here on the front. Um, and the way this thing works is here's your lid. It actually has a thing in the back where you hold your lid. So one of the problems with either some cheap chafing dishes or not all of them is they don't have anywhere to put the lid. So when you're serving and your guests are, you know, taking this off, they end up putting it down on the table, messing up your tablecloth or whatever. This has a really nice thing to hold the lid. So it has an inner pan where you put your food and it has an outer pan where you put the hot water and it has a can down. You put a can down here and you burn it so that your uh, food stays warm, right? Nice and warm. So I also have like a really expensive all clad chafing dish and they only made them for a few years and I managed to get a really good deal on it and it is one of my favorite pieces in the kitchen. Um, or my favorite serving pieces. And I always thought that it went well with this because it's a compact size, the shape is similar to my all clad. And so every time I used them, I thought, oh, I wish I had a second one of these, but I had only bought one and they discontinued it. So like other things that I did, right, I put a search, um, alert on my eBay for Wolfgang Puck chafing dish to see if there's any chance that I could come across another one of these. And let me tell you, my search ran for more than five years. Um, Wolfgang Puck's chafing dishes come up, but not this exact one. And so I was thinking I was never gonna get another one of these because literally it's been more than five years that that search has been running and nothing has ever come up. Well, about six months ago, I got, I always got emails about Wolfgang Puck's chafing dishes, but they never matched this. Well, about six months ago, one came up and it was the same with the same signature and everything. And I was like, I wanna get this. But I didn't, I sort of hesitated because I was busy or whatever and I really wasn't paying attention. And it kept emailing me that it was there. So it emailed me for a good month 
that it was there. And I was trying to like, hey, why didn't I get that chafing dish? So I ordered it. The, I think the seller dropped the price. So I got um, this alert that the price was lowered. So I bought it, right? So I have sitting right down here uh, that chafing dish that I ordered. So let me grab it. Okay, there's several things when I'm shopping on eBay for an item like this. One of the problems is this was made years ago. They don't no longer make it. So whatever comes up on the secondary market, as you would say, is whatever that I have available. And if you know anything about me, I am a complete and total germaphobe. So there's a lot of things that I won't necessarily buy used and I prefer to buy something that's new. So when I find something that's like original in the box and sealed, never used, like that Breadman that I found, I tend to jump on it because those are the ones, you know, those are the ones that are really hard to come by. And I really prefer that over buying something used. So the seller described this as never used in the box. So when it arrived, I was a little concerned because I originally bought that one at Costco and this arrived in an HSN. This is the box that it arrived in an HSN box. So I'm like, did I somehow screw up and it's not the same one? <laughs> we'll see, right? That'll be my own fault. I'll, then I'll have two mismatched uh, chafing dishes when I was looking for one that was the same. So what do you think this is going to be, boo? Do you think it's going to match? You can always relist it, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I can put it on Facebook Marketplace if I decide if it doesn't match. Because I definitely won't keep it if it doesn't match. So let's see. Eric thought maybe they slapped it in. Oh, they said thank you. Oh, that's nice. They uh, slapped it in this box. Um, was this the best deal you ever got? Huh, interesting. Here's your coupon to savings. Turn this over to find out how. Okay. Um, I think this was a charity that was selling this. Okay, let's see what we got. We have an old HSN ad here. <laughs> and um, this is looking promising here, guys. So here's the lid. This is looking promising. Here's the lid on mine. Does it fit? Ooh. Ooh. This is looking promising. Okay. Pan. Food pan. This is looking promising. Inner pan. Ah! Wolfgang Puck. Bistro. This is looking promising. Somewhere? Huh? Oh, oh, we haven't got to get it. Whoops. <laughs> um, here's the use and care. Huh? This is a Wolfgang Puck summer recipes from years ago. This is looking promising. Uh, hmm, looking even more promising because I see this piece, which is that piece. I might have got it hooked up because I think I paid like 16 bucks for this. And I believe I paid like 30 for that one. So here's our little can. Can I am for the can. The can for the can. Ooh. 
<laughs> I see the signature. Yay! It matches. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Look at it. There's the Wolf King Park. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I found one. Oh my gosh. Yes, you do see me get excited over a chafing dish. Okay, so I think I gotta put this in here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I found one. I found a second one to match my other one. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Um, I never thought that I was gonna find, they're exactly the same. I never thought I was gonna find another one of these. And you say, she's so happy over a chafing dish. I'm so happy over a chafing dish because now I have two that match. So when I do a buffet or something, I can put my all clad in the middle and I have two matching Wolfgang Puck, uh, well, two matching sort of square chafing dishes. Oh my gosh, I am so happy. This is a great Wednesday. So I was totally wrong because I thought maybe I got mine like 10 years ago. But looking at this material inside this one, this is a program guide for HSN from October 2005. It is 2020, so this thing is 15 years old. So, and I got it at Costco, so I don't know when. It must have been around that time. So I've had this thing more like 15 years. So I am so excited because I managed to get a another matching chafing dish that I bought 15 years ago and I got a brand new one in the box for like $16. I am so happy. Um, yeah, October 2005. Can you believe that? It's 15 years old. So I'm really excited about that. So after we unboxed the blue mixer over there the other day, something really caught my attention on the box of that mixer. So KitchenAid always tells you the watts, the size, and then it'll tell you something about flour power, or sometimes it talks about the number of dozens of cookies that you can make in a mixer. And there was a discrepancy on the box of that mixer that sort of um, set off the Amy alert, right? So with this side of the box, I saw that it makes nine dozen cookies. But when you look on this other side of the box, I see that this mixer does 13 dozen cookies. So my question is, KitchenAid, what does this mixer do? Does this mixer do nine dozen cookies or 13 dozen cookies, right? I kind of want to know that. But it leads me to another issue. And I think we've talked about this in the past where I always see mixers that have these wattage ratings and I really wonder about some of those ratings because some mixers will say they have a thousand watts, 1200 watts, but when I use it, it doesn't really feel like it has significantly more power than another mixer like this with 525 watts. And sometimes I wonder about some of the wattage ratings on the KitchenAids because you have the commercial eight that's running 1.3 horsepower supposedly, but I don't know about that. Yeah, the Hobart only has 300 watts. So I'm like, how does a Hobart that has significantly more power that doesn't give a what about ingredients, right? It, cause it'll just run right through them. And you have another mixer that says it's 1.3 horsepower which would be up in a thousand watts or more. And I don't feel like that mixer can do half what the Hobart can do at a third of the watts. And I know some of it is DC versus AC motors and all that fun stuff. But once we unbox this mixer and I had those three mixers out here, I had the Pro 600 at 575 and I had this one at 525. 
I got some comments about people saying, oh, I want the Pro 600 because it has 575 as opposed to 525. And my first reaction is knowing how many mixers that I've used where the wattage is never like seem to equate to the power level of the mixer. I'm, my first bit of advice is if you see something that's so close like that, 575 versus 525, 600 versus 500, whatever that is, I'm thinking because those watts are partially based on load, they're partially based on averages, they're partially based on marketing, that the difference between those two levels should not be a determining factor on whether you buy one mixer versus another mixer. So this brings up a whole new question for me. Eric was an electrician. He tried to explain to me all this stuff and I'm just sitting there like, you know, what, right? And so he's got this little gadget that he uses on his computers and on our televisions that he plugs into and it's like a kicked up power surge protector. But it does a lot of analysis and one of the things it does is it tells you how much watts that it's drawing. So let me go grab it and we're gonna do an initial fun little thing with this one. We're gonna plug this thing into this thing and see what this thing is going to draw. And if there's some kind of question that I have, maybe we're going to come back and we're going to get together all those different models and some different sizes and some different watts ratings. And we're going to hook it up to this thing and we're going to see really what these mixers are doing. So let me go grab it and I'll be right back. Hi y'all. This is an APC power conditioner. This is good for stereo equipment. Um, you can kind of see on the back, there's all kinds of plugins for coax cables and just anything stereo related, DVRs, TV, CDs, auxiliary, amplifiers, subwoofers, preamps, all kinds of good stuff. What I like about it is it'll take whatever the input power is. It could be 125 watts, 120, 125 watts, 124 volts, for example and it'll do its best to maintain 115 volts. So it's not just a surge protector, but it does its best to smooth out voltage so that way your electronics, which can be sensitive, pretty much know what to expect. It's, it's at a reference voltage. And depending upon the load, internally this thing will turn this stuff into a nice smooth for it. Well, for our little test here, I'm going to plug this into the amplifier thing and we're not really dealing with a lot of watts here, especially since we're not really making cookies, we're not making bread. We're just basically spinning air for the most part. But it is kind of cool watching the volt amps, in this case, which is the same as watts, go up and down based on the <laughs> speed of this thing. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, we're all set up. We have our Pro 5 Plus. We have the APC here, and we're gonna turn this baby on. So. One of the things you're going to notice when we turn it on, we don't have any food in here, so it's not under a load. So this is a basic test because I think after doing this, I want to go a little farther with this. So we're going to be doing some playing around between models to see if there's really a wattage difference between them when we actually use them. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to use my cell phone because that's the only way you can really see this up close. So it may get a little uh, jittery because I'm doing that handheld. So let's turn this baby on. We're going to the stir speed. And you're gonna watch, see where it says zero VA? That's where we're gonna be watching for the watt. So here we go. So on the stir speed, it's about 130, 140. Two. Four. So I'm gonna crank it all the way up to 10 and you're gonna see it spike and then it'll come down because when you first rev it up, 
it's going to use a little bit more watts and then it's going to settle down a little bit. So 230 was about the maximum? Yeah, so it went up to 230 and under maximum speed, it's hovering between 190 and 210. So not even under a load, we're only talking 210 watts. So the question is, if we put this under a load, what is it going to do? Because, you know, when you're buying a mixer, you're thinking, oh, 575 versus 525 versus 325 on my other Pro 5. Does it matter that much, really, when you're using it? Just basic mixing like this with nothing in it, we're only using about 200 watts. So we have a lot of watts to go, so we will see. I'm thinking my assessment initially is, some people are asking, you know, I want a Pro 6 because it's 525 versus 5, 575 versus 525 on this, when we did the unboxing and we did a sound test. And I'm thinking what I'm gonna end up saying is, that difference in wattage makes no difference in your use but we're gonna figure that out. So stay tuned, because we are gonna have a watt test between various models of KitchenAid, and we might do one with some other models also in the future, but we're gonna start with KitchenAid. So we're gonna put our Classic Plus on here, we're gonna put a Artisan, we're gonna put a five quart, a six quart, and we're gonna put the Commercial Eight on this to see what kind of wattage that it uses just on a basic run because I don't know we'd have to figure out what kind of video we could do where we do them under load we're gonna have to do them separately or maybe only two because the video is gonna run like an hour um, yeah so stay tuned for that so this has been an amazing what's up Wednesday not only did I come up with a chafing dish that I've been looking for for years. We also did an initial wattage test on this KitchenAid, and um, I don't know, the jury's out yet. We will see when we test all of them um, what the APC has to say about the wattage issue. So that's gonna be fun. Stay tuned for that video because that is gonna be coming up in probably the next week. So looking forward to it. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. I know this is a little bit of a craziness, but I love stand mixers and I love to play around with them and I love to discover things about them. And every time I have another mixer, I discover something different. And this is just going to be another test for us to judge you know, how we make our purchasing decision on these mixers. So stay tuned. Happy Wednesday. I hope you have a great one. If you like this video, please subscribe below. Leave me a comment and a like. And come on over and join me on my Facebook group, particularly through these tests, because we're going to have some interesting things to talk about in that group. Facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. You can also catch me on social media at Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook and on Instagram also at Cooking with Amy. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell for notifications when we do the uploads of this KitchenAid test. Thanks for joining me and have a great week.